Hey guys, ABP Man here, and in today's video, we're taking a look at 3D printing technology. But this time, we're taking a look at resin based 3D printing. Today's video is going to be focusing on the brand new 2021 EPAX E6. It's a 6 inch 2K mono LCD 3D printer. The monochrome LCD screens allow you to print much faster than ever before. So let's get right to it. Now, before taking a closer look at the EPAX E6 and then the prints that I've been running for the last couple of weeks, I wanted to talk about the technical specifications. So first of all, we're taking a look at the EPAX E6. From a software perspective, you can expect to slice with the Cheeto Box slicer. It has two inputs, either USB or Ethernet. And one of the cool things about this is that you can stream your content, so literally from your PC or your laptop, as long as this is connected to your internal network, you can drive prints directly to the printer without having to have a physical USB stick. And I have to tell you that of all the printers that I have tested, and I have three resin printers at home, this is the easiest printer. So if you are a, let's say a first timer that's looking to get into resin 3D printing and you're maybe a traditional 3D printer, uh, and you want to check something out, this is the printer for you because it's super duper easy. Uh, the technology itself, the way that it's able to get these 2K prints is using LCD technology. It has a 3.5 inch touchscreen that's going to allow you to navigate the entire um, application or at least the, the actual system itself to be able to generate your prints. Uh, from a resolution perspective or build volume, you can expect a 128 by 81 by 155. So it's gonna give you some really nice size prints. So before we go into more about the printer and check it out, let's talk about why you would consider this and we'll take a look at some of the prints as well as just going over the overall printer. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, this is one of the most easiest printers that I have used to date. And I have three of them. So literally, all you have to do is put this uh, printer together and it doesn't take a lot of time maybe all of five minutes to put together. And then after you put it together, you go into the Cheeto Box software, as you can see right here. Uh, I'm using the beta version 1.8. And then what you're able to do is literally just choose your printer, choose your resin type, and then just load your prints and you're set to go. I had zero failures, zero failures. I printed over 16 different prints without any kind of failure whatsoever, which is unheard of in my experience with some of the other printers that I've had in my home. So super duper simple for someone who's looking to, let's say, be the first time that you're working with a resin printer. Now, in addition to it being extremely simple to use, uh, one of the things I really like is that there is no real calibration, at least in my experience. I didn't have to go and change my different settings, play around with things. I literally, I just went into the software, set it to go, and I got some great prints. Now, for those of you who are looking at printing uh, resin and you've never done it before, I wanna show you some differences in what you can expect when it comes from prints. And then we'll talk about more features that I really like about this printer. So the first thing as we look at this uh, here, this is an orc and this is an orc that I printed on one of my, I would say 3D printers, but they're filament based. And you can see great detail, um, nice bust, right? Really, really like the way this one looks here. And, uh, but there's some differences, right? So one of the things I wanted to show you is let's take a look at this resin one over here. We're gonna bring in the same orc right here and notice the difference. So first of all, let's not focus so much on the color, but let's focus on the quality and the detail. So while this one right here, I printed at high definition. Uh, it was, it took about four hours to print and there's a lot of definition here. I really can't complain that much about it. When you take a look at the resin version, uh, the resin version just has so much more detail. So literally, as we take a look at the resin version right here, you're seeing all the stitching really clearly that's on his leather here, this, this, uh, this belt that you have. You can see all the detail here from the claws. Look at his face, all his detail. Uh, these guys right here, super duper sharp all the texture, right? And if I put this base in, uh, you can see that the base also has some, some nice detail as well. So one of the things I like about resin printer is just the overall resolution. And, and in this case, this is a 2K uh, resin printer. There are 4K printers, but when you look at this detail, it does a fantastic job. Now, one other feature that I really like about this printer is that in my opinion, you really don't need a flex plate. Uh, removing the prints from this printer was extremely easy and enjoyable. I had to say, all I had to do was put the spatula on the side, just move it slightly, and then the prints would just pop off. Unlike some other printers, where I'm really struggling to get the actual uh, prints off of the build plate, 
and you know necessitating you know me to actually purchase a flex plate uh, to make it easier. So a flex plate is just a little um, magnetic plate that goes on top of your build plate so that when you're going to remove a print, it's just easier to remove. But this one is super duper easy. And again, take a look at this other print that I have right here. Uh, this print right here is another, um, I would say orc. Uh, look at this detail, Ken. This was printed on the printer. And again, 2K doesn't do this printer justice because look at the actual detail. We'll try to make sure that this comes out really nicely. Look at that. And again, this is out of the box. This was opening the box, loading the software, choosing a print file to print and just go. No tweaking, no calibrating, just getting it going. And look at this. I'll just continue to move this over to the side so you can see the detail. Really, 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 really nice. So this is an orc mask. Uh, if this was larger, if the printer was larger, I could do one uh, at size of my face. But obviously, given the build plate size, this is a little bit smaller. So great, great quality. Now, this is another sample that I printed from the printer. So look, you can see at this Mondo bust. Uh, look at the overall detail. Again, you can see on the head here. You can see on the sides. We'll flip it over on the back. You can see his cape. Um, again, the side right here. You can see me post a lot of this kind of stuff on Instagram where we've been showing some of the prints, but they have been more uh, filament based prints. But here you can see all of the detail that you're getting out of this, uh, this size bust. And I could still go larger, right? I can go much higher given the build volume that you have on this printer, but the detail on this is absolutely superb. Now, one of the other things I really like about this printer is that the build plate itself is already pre-leveled, so you don't have to do anything. Now, if you do consider to pick up this printer or any other Risen printer, a couple of things that I would recommend. Uh, make sure that, first of all, that you've protected your LCD screen. It's very, very common for the FEP, the, the tray that has your resin, uh, to, over time, you could puncture a hole in it especially if you have any kind of prints that are really sharp. So when we look at this orc, and I'll bring them back on camera here so you can take a look at them. Uh, this orc here, you notice that these areas are pretty pointy. And what I've noticed over time in just printing things, that sometimes the actual uh, plastic where that resin is um, sitting in, that tray where it's sitting in, uh, sometimes that plastic could get dented. Um, and you may not notice that it has a leak. And that leak will not be present even when you lift the tray. It's not until the point where it actually gets pressured by that, uh, that plate, the build plate that goes down, that the leak takes place. And if resin were to fall on your LCD screen, one of the things that will happen is once the LCD UV turns on, it's gonna harden and it's gonna ruin your LCD. So make sure that you always, always have some type of protection. You can see that I have on mine some protection. Now, taking a closer look at the Epax E6, we'll take a look at the actual touchscreen. The touchscreen itself is easy to navigate. All you have to do is touch the screen to navigate throughout the entire experience. And the cool thing about this is that this touchscreen experience and software is consistent around every single Epax device. So if later, if you choose to upgrade, you'll already know all the other machines because you know this one already. Now on the side of the printer, you can see here you have your USB connection, but don't forget that not only can you load prints through USB, you could also load them through the ethernet connection that's found in the back. Now, if you're considering getting into resin printing, I highly recommend you consider the Epax E6 for five reasons. First, it's easy to use. Second, there's no real calibration needed. Choose your machine, choose your resin, and you're set to go. At least that was my experience with the CheetoVox software version 1.8. Also, the small footprint the great print quality, even at 2K, and then also the fact that there's really no configuration needed from a hardware perspective. The plate is leveled, and believe me, if you look at the posts that are out there on leveling, leveling is one of the hardest things that a lot of people struggle with. So that takes out all the complication when it comes to resin printing. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Epax E6 resin printer. See you in the next one.